One of the number one questions I get is how to mount bindings onto a snowboard. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a pretty generic how to mount snowboard bindings to your snowboard. Now I am sponsored by Clue Bindings, so this means this video is sponsored by Clue. And not only am I gonna show you how to mount Clue Bindings onto a normal snowboard, meaning like with inserts, I'm also gonna teach you how to mount snowboard bindings onto a Burton snowboard with a channel system. And yes, Clue Bindings can be mounted onto Burton snowboards with a channel system. That's another question I get a ton of. We're gonna start with the traditional snowboard first, and then we'll move over to the burn channel system at the end, just so you guys know. Very important if you do get clue bindings, the screws are right here in the center of the board and it also comes with bindings for a regular snowboard and then a burn snowboard. Now the reason why it has two different sets of screws, one for regular boards, one for the burn channel system, is the burn channel system has a smaller screw. So there is a different screw size for a burn board than there is a regular snowboard. Now every pair of clue bindings is gonna come with a disc plate in the center of the board, but if you wanted to do the upgraded version, which I have right here, you can always get the air Air tag disc plate. This is a disc plate that you can attach an air tag into it which helps you find your snowboard if you lose it on the mountain, but also helps prevent theft, or doesn't prevent the theft, but if someone steals your board, you're gonna be able to find it. Air tags are not waterproof, but we're not snowboarding on water. Watch, I, I know what you guys are gonna comment. This is actually super legit. I literally just had my snowboard lost at the airport, and I was able to find my snowboard bag before the airport could because of having an air tag in my snowboard bag, in my base of my snowboard. So I go with the air tag display. This is an add-on to your clue purchase. But other than having the air tag at the bottom, this is the same display that's gonna be any clue binding. Now this tutorial will work for any bindings, but if you do have clue bindings, make sure for this part, you remove the high back and just have the base. This is gonna make installing the binding so much easier. And I'm gonna install on a blank snowboard the bindings. Now a lot of people have a question of like, how far do you spread the bindings? Now most snowboards have a reference point of where you should mount the bindings. Some will have it for like free ride or freestyle, many different recommended spots for where to mount your bindings. You could totally go with the reference, but for me, what I like to do is go and get a barbell or, you know, like a squat rack and do a squat. And then whatever my squat position is, that is how far I know to distance my bindings. We are humans, we're all different. So you might prefer a wider stance or a smaller stance. And that's why I like the barbell opposed to the reference point because I'm, for me, I'm different size than most humans. So with clue bindings and other bindings, there are some things that you can do before you actually attach the binding to the snowboard, some adjustments that you can make that are gonna make your experience better. So a lot of bindings have this little adjustment here on the bottom, so you can either move the toe shaft closer to the front or to the back. And so if you have big feet, you'd wanna go kind of more forward. I have really small feet, so I always go more back with my toe strap placement. That way it pulls me more into the binding. The other thing you can do with bindings and clue bindings is kind of special with this one is you can adjust this footbed more forward, meaning you can either have the toe rise because there's a slight rise here in the toe, closer or further away. I know for me personally, I like to take my footbed to a positive one. So I'm gonna adjust it right here at the bottom until my footbed is at positive one. And then when I know I'm at positive one, I can push it down. And once again, that's for clue bindings. Other bindings will have ways to adjust that stuff forward and backwards. And depending on what feels comfortable underneath your foot, you'll know where to put that. Same thing with the straps. Once again, I got small feet, so I like to have the straps further back instead of forward. So once you've made those adjustments to the clue bindings, you're now ready to put these onto the board. So obviously you put your display in here and then you gotta decide what angle you want to be. Now your front foot is gonna be a positive angle and your back foot is gonna be a negative angle. Unless you're really into carving and you want both feet to be positive, I don't recommend that for any normal snowboarder. That is more for like a serious carver dude that wants like crazy turns. Now personally, I like my front foot to be at a positive 12. A lot of people will do like positive 15 and you can go extreme and go all the way to like a positive 20. That's a 30, go like a positive 20. That's on the extreme level. I don't really recommend that. And once again, it's all preference at this point. I like a, about a positive 12 on my lead foot. Now, once we have our front foot angle decided, we need to talk about our back foot. Now the back foot is different than the front foot. Now we always want our front foot slightly angled, a little open. That's gonna help you snowboard, I promise. But the back foot doesn't have to be open unless you do a lot of switch snowboarding. For me personally, I ride about regular 60% of the time and 40% of the time I'm riding switch. So I'm riding both directions pretty often. So I'm actually gonna put my back foot at a negative angle, something like 12 and 12. So I, I 
go the same as my lead foot. That way when I'm riding switch, it feels the same as when I'm riding regular. But if you are a person that doesn't ride a lot of switch or if you're on a directional snowboard, I recommend either going zero or like three degrees. So once again, if you're like, I don't really care about riding switch, I don't wanna do riding switch, I'm gonna go zero. I know I'm not going switch on my swallowtail snowboard, that's totally fine. If you are like, I might ride switch maybe like 10% of the time, 5% of the time, a negative three degree, a slight angle on the back foot is not a bad move. If you're in the train park and you're like, I wanna do a regular trick and land switch and then hit the next jump switch and you're riding a lot of switch, I recommend same on both feet. So once we have our angles decided, it's time to get pretty nerdy and we're gonna get into this base plate and why there are so many holes here. So the base plate's designed to go multiple directions. We can have it going side to side and you can really get very nuanced with how far you want this to go side to side. Or if you have big feet, we can fully spin the base plate and now we can decide how forward or backwards we want this binding to go. So if you're getting a lot of toe hang, you can then slide yourself more backwards and you're gonna have less toe hang because you move yourself more this way. Or if you have a lot of heel hang, you can move yourself more forward. This is all preference. If you wanna go more side to side or more forward and backwards. I've been experimenting a lot with this recently and I kind of enjoy this like more front to back. Like if I go to here, I'm actually gonna get heel hang. If I go to here, I'm not gonna get any heel hang, no toe hang. So for me personally, I can go with the center because I have really small feet. So once again, it all comes down to you personally. So for this board, I know it's got a wider stance. I'm gonna go with the side to side and I'm probably gonna go more on to this direction. Now I've done a lot of squats. I know exactly where I like my feet to be spread apart. I have a 13 and a half inch stance in between. So I'm gonna kind of line up my bindings to where that needs to be, to be at 13 and a half. And I always measure for my heel cups, so 13 and a half for my heel cups, but I know that this is my strong snowboard stance. Now I'm gonna take my screws that came in the box. I'm gonna go with the, once again, the traditional snowboard bindings, because that's what we're mounting to. Now I got a screwdriver at my house, but if you are in the mountain and you need a good screwdriver, I'll have this one link in the description. This is by far the best on mountain screwdriver because it gives you some torque and it has the perfect sizes for snowboard bindings and it also has a little sheet so you're not going to stab yourself and let's be real too the bottle opener. Now when installing snowboard bindings it's good to go crisscross applesauce so you'll install one here and then you'll install one there then one here and one here and you never go fully tight until the end. Once you got all four in you can then Go really good with the screw, that way you know you're in there, but don't go too crazy. You can pop the insert of a snowboard, and then that's a disaster. The boards for that insert is then basically trash. It'll just spin forever. Now, once we have our bases installed, we can put our high backs back in. Make sure you get the ratchets correct. I always get that wrong. Now before we adjust the straps and go over straps, let's install the Burton snowboard real fast. So same as before, we're gonna remove the high backs from the, the bindings so that we just have the bases with the clues. Not every snowboard does that, kind of pain in the butt. Honestly, it's so easier to work with these while there's no high backs. Also, I should have said this in the first time, but the ratchets to go on your outside of your foot, if that makes sense. So they should be pointing to your tail or your nose. If your ratchets are on the inside, like this, you did it the wrong way. Now with the Burton board, you obviously you gotta put your inserts in. Now if your snowboard doesn't have inserts in the channel system, you, if you bought it like used or something, then you gotta go to the store and get these inserts. You have to have these in your board. So you just kind of pop out this rubber piece right here. And then you're gonna take two of these guys that came with your snowboard and just slide them in. And on the Burton board, once again, here's that kind of reference points right here that they're recommending. And if you did the squat stuff, then you should know what your distance is between your feet. Now, once again, I ride for Clue, so I get the specialty of having a bunch of AirTag disc plates to go inside of my base. You just take the AirTag, pop it right in, and then I'm gonna worry about my boy walking away from me. Now we covered it with the previous board, same thing. I'm gonna adjust my bindings to the way I want them before I put them on the board. Now these are your holes for traditional snowboards. These really far out weird ones, these are your holes for Burton snowboards. So when I am going to install on the Burton board, I'm going to do it based off of these little holes. So this can be a little bit more complicated. You're gonna have to play around with the holes and see what they're doing. But if I want the binding to be more forward, I can spin the base plate fully around and that's gonna move my binding more forward. If I want my binding to be more backwards, I'm gonna spin it all the way this way, 
that's going to put me more backwards. Vice versa, if I want the binding to be more centered, I'm going to go there. So you have your centered, forward, and backwards. And that's based off these holes in there. So you're still getting these three degree of changes, but it's based off of where you twist it. So you got to play with it, see what's happening while you're adjusting it. I like it to be more on the centered side. Once again, I got nice small feet, so that's not an issue for me. So once I have the holes that I want, I, once again, I'm gonna go to my, for me personally, my 13 and a half space. So I'll get my distance correct, and then I'm gonna take my Burton Channel System screws and use these to attach my bases to my board. And because there's only two screws, you just kind of slightly tighten one side and then tighten the other and then go back and fully make them tight. And once we're nice and tight, we can then, once again, put our high backs back in and we're going to talk about the straps. But before we jump into the straps, I do want to mention that Clue Bindings, once again, the ones that I'm installing, are a binding sponsor of this channel. These are the best hybrid step-in binding systems of all time. The reason why I call them a hybrid step-in binding system is they have the step-in option. You can fully eject yourself and then step back in super easy, getting that quick, not needing to bend over, sit strap in, sit down. You can just roll super fast with the Clue Bindings. However, if you're also into park riding, power riding, big mountain riding, you still have straps so you can really tie Tighten yourself back in, or if the pad is so deep and you're having issues clicking in, anything like that, you can just run them like traditional bindings. Clue bindings are the most versatile option giving you bindings on the market, and I highly, highly recommend them. I've been rocking them for over four years now. I've been literally with them since the launch. So not only am I recommending them because I'm sponsored by them, I, I've been using them for the last four seasons. If you've seen my progression, you've seen the lines that I ride, I'm doing those on clue bindings. There's nothing holding me back on the mountain with these bindings. So hit the link in the description, grab yourself a pair of clue bindings, you will not be disappointed. Okay, so depending on the bindings you get when you gotta adjust straps, some are already come attached. Clue's really awesome and they're already unattached, which makes our lives, it's just one less step that we gotta do. We don't gotta adjust things. The other thing that's unique to Clue is Clue has the only locking binding strap on the market that's designed to make sure your toe strap locks in place when you're clicking in and clicking out. So you'll peel this off. So that means after you ratchet in, you can lock it in place that click is means locked, and then to unlock it, which is easier when your foot's in there, you can unlock it, and then when it's unlocked, you pull here, and it'll release. So that way, the toe strap is locked in, and it's not gonna fall off on you. I need to break that down for anyone that has clue bindings, that way you don't think your ratchet is broken, it is designed to lock. So now the next thing you're gonna need to adjust your straps is your actual snowboard boot. Get your snowboard boot and tighten it down super nice and tight. You only need one boot, so you'll adjust the settings on one binding and you'll kind of know where you are with reference and then you can do that to this side over here. So stick your snowboard boot in and then kind of see where you need to be to be as tight as you want to be. So I'm kind of like right there and then I know where I want to screw in nice and tight. Now what we start with your heel strap first and then kind of pull yourself back into the boot and then we're gonna adjust the toe strap. Kind of ratchet this side in to where it's lined up and then you can kind of line up your hole and then stretch down. Now what we don't want is clicking. We don't want to be able to ratchet the binding to where there's no more ratchet. If we're tightening our ratchet and it's going like and I can't go any further but I'm still kind of loose, that means we need to adjust the binding more this way and that's why we have some slack over here. Sometimes if you got small feet, you gotta go all the way to the other side. Thankfully with the clues, I fit nice and tight in my small bindings and this boot is ready to go. So now I know with this binding over here, I need to be in the third hole and then for this distance right here, because that's a channel, I can bust out my little measure and I can kind of measure, it's like one and a quarter where I need to be for this guy. Now once we got our straps, all done, we are not finished with our bindings. Now for clue binding specifically, or if you're on the East Coast, some resorts for some reason still want you to rock a leash. I am not a big fan of leashes. I also don't use these with my clue bindings because I trust the system so much, but if you don't trust it, you're a little worried, you can get this leash, you can wrap it around. I don't even know where to wrap it, but essentially attach this to your binding kind of like through the that way of doing it and then connect it to your boot, however you want, clip it somewhere. I don't use this, but Clue's awesome, and they provide you with a leash with your Clue binding, so that's, that's a thing. 
attach it wherever you want. But now we got our straps done, we got our leash on. There's another thing we gotta do before we adjust our forward lean if we want that, and you know what this is. An evolution sticker. Now this is a custom one for my custom board. If you want a custom one, you gotta DM me about that. Depending on the time of the year, I can make it happen for you. But we do have evolution stickers for snowboards and helmets, whatever you want. The evolution merch is the raddest thing. It's how I do this for a living. If you wanna stack any of my merchandise, it's all linked down below. This is the goggle crossbone. We have just the traditional evolution as well as a ski version for all the skiers out there. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this onto the nose of my board. It's where I like to put mine. I just wing it. Throw it on, rub it on, and like that, this snowboard is ready for the mountain. Some people say that the stickers help you shred better on the mountain. That's kind of like urban legend or kind of a myth, but looks good. Now let's talk forward lean. I personally have never been a person to use forward lean. That's basically this piece right here. You adjust it and as you adjust it, it leans your binding more forward or straight up. So I always rock it straight up, but you can adjust this screw and make it more forward. So the purpose of forward lean is to have more pressure against the back of your leg, meaning your heel side edge. So if you want to engage your heel side edge quicker or faster, you want forward lean. So if you're really into half pipe riding or just carving and you want a really good heel side carve, forward lean is awesome. The reason why I don't use it is I'm into rail riding. And when you get onto a rail, what I don't want to do is get under a rail, get like lean back just a little bit and it really engaged my heel side edge. So the more you want to engage your heel side edge, the more forward lean you want. This is all preference. I know people that have a ton of forward lean and they ride rails. Personally, I go with zero. Maybe I should give myself some forward lean and see what happens. I don't know. Maybe I'll set up a board, maybe like my directional board with some forward lean and see how that kind of goes. But that is how to professionally install your bindings onto a snowboard, whether it's a regular snowboard or a Burton snowboard. Once again, big shout out to Clue for sponsoring this channel, giving me bindings every single season. And I hope you guys learned a ton from this video. I think I know a decent amount of snowboarding, but I might've left something out. So what's something that you do for your bindings. I know some people put like forward upwards duct tape that helps them so they don't get swivel foot but also keeps the top of their board looking nice. There's so many hacks and nuances and things you can do with bindings but this is the basic but also pro level knowledge you need to know for installing your bindings onto your snowboard and once again just know overall it's preference. How much angle you want, how much distance you need, all of that type of stuff is a preference. You're not going to do it wrong. It's what works for you. The only thing you can do wrong is not have a pair of clue bindings on the mountain. But with that team up, Kyle, thank you so much for shredding with me today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. YouTube really wants you to watch the video at the end of this. It literally hand selected it for you.